Hello guys, this is Alex Gomez and welcome back to the second video of this series. So today we're gonna detail our uh, character. So once we have everything in place and all block out, we're just gonna dynamesh in a probably good resolution, probably 1440. Uh, the parts that we need to be together, for example, uh, in this case, we're gonna do the trunks and the shirt. Okay, so after dynameshing, make sure that you guys uh, use the fill uh, or a clay build up uh, brush so you can just fill out all the intersections of our previous uh, block out elements. And as you can see, I'm still like uh, working on some proportions and so on. In this case, well, something that I did that I think uh, it worked out is because uh, it's a solid object and it wouldn't look that great if I would have leave it that solid. So what I did at the end was kind of like a dyna mesh with the arms and the neck as well. Uh, so in this case, I kind of like uh, start giving a little bit more volume around the neck and also in the shoulders. And the idea of this for me is to mask out kind of like the tank top and the trunks to it. So it doesn't get like a such a, like a, a thick object. So this is what I'm going to be doing now. As you see, I can just mask out, invert the mask. No, invert the mask. I'm just going to mask it and then going to extract in a really, really low, kind of like a thin, um, in the thickness, probably like around 0 0.005. And then I can just start moving and delete the parts that I don't need at all. So in that part, I don't need the trunks anymore because I have the trunks. I'm going to leave the upper body as it, as it is and delete the trunks. After doing that, I'm just going to start working a little bit with the, uh, with the body. And uh, in this case, I'm just uh, using like uh, three simple brushes. I'm using the dam standard. I'm using the pinch brush and the fill brush. And you can use, uh, you can uh, look at those brushes and get them at uh, Chain Nelson's uh, character, three character workshop uh, a website. You can get them for free there. So they're really awesome. And I, I use them a lot when I'm uh, doing stylized characters. So, yeah, so in this process, I just uh, decided just to start kind of like building up a little bit of the muscles and trying to get those details, the secondary details, I will say, like, well, primary, the, the kind of like uh, the rough details, first the rough details. While I'm working on the shirt, I always make sure that I have back mask a back face mask uh, turned on because the problem when you don't have it on yeah, and this is a thin surface. It's got the uh, your brush is gonna go through, and it's gonna cause you problems later on when you dynamesh again. So make sure when you're doing that, just make sure that you have back face mask on. So yeah, so I'm gonna keep working on my neck, kind of like uh, giving the the right shapes uh, depending on the on the design. I stick to the design quite a bit not as much as I wish to but you know I kind of like uh, these exercises on, are like a uh, fun exercises for me I really like enjoy it's just a practice for me when I have a production obviously when I working for a production character definitely I take uh, more time and I'm more meticulous uh, on details on shapes and on sticking right uh, my model to the design as much as I can in this case, I just base the design, I, I just base my model on the design and just go with the flow with it. And I definitely forgot last video to show you guys the design, so I've just uh, put it in front of the screen here, right in the corner, so you guys can see it. If you guys can help me figure out who the artist is, I will appreciate it. But anyways, so keep going in, in uh, doing the, the shirt. So those ones are the basic brushes that I use. Mostly, it's the um, <clears throat> the sorry the f uh, pinch brush, the fill brush, the polish, and the dam standard and um, clay build up. 
uh, with different and those ones are the the brushes that I use most of the time and uh, so right now I saw that there were like uh, some problems with the proportions a little bit so what I decided to do was to just kind of stretch out a little bit the part of the waist and then from the waist uh, I just mask out kind of like the belt and do almost the same thickness that I did with the with the trunks and the and the shirt or the tank top, and then added some details with the dam standard. And then as the, after those details were done, I kind of like uh, add a little bit of volume between those creases, with um, with the clay buildup, and I just kind of like uh, define a little bit more those uh, kind of like wrinkles with a pinch brush just using alt to to either uh, go positive or uh, to add and uh, releasing alt just to subtract and you can see here i just use the clay build up with a really really soft alpha to be able to to do that then i work a little bit more on the on the trunks, kind of like uh, giving a little bit more of detail in the part of the crotch and in the behind, like a uh, right where the butt is. And obviously, you see, like it kind of like a uh, because I built a little bit of, uh, of surface there, so I have always to polish. So always when you when you're working on on stylized characters, make sure that anything that you're building, you, you're polishing as well. So then I move to the legs. And for the legs, I start like uh, like moving that. I know like that part of the legs uh, uh, were really really thin. So what I did was just masking out the half of it and move it, and then mask out the other half and just move it inside so I can get that really really thin part of the of the lower leg. So yeah, I, I keep moving like adding with the fill object uh, fill uh, uh, or uh, the fill brush or the build clay up, I start adding a little bit more of a volume to it and polish uh, as well. I move to the knees and I kind of like define the knees with a pinch brush. And also for the feet, I, I also use, uh, sometimes I use the, um, no, the clay build up or the fill, but I use the inflate tool as well. And as uh, the same as I did for the knees, I do for the ankles, which I built a little bit of volume in there, and then I I, I define it with the with the pinch tool. Then I mask out where the boots are, and I uh, separate or split that tool, uh, you know, on mask parts, and I make uh, the mask parts different, and I kind of like move. Uh, the calves and that part of the leg, I move it inside of the new boots. And we can see that now like everything is is taking a uh, more shape, it's looking a, a bit better. Uh, I start working in a little bit more details, kind of like adding more geometry to get part of the design that where the zipper goes, I don't know how you call that part. But anyways, let me know in the comments. Just no idea, but uh, yeah. So I just uh, when, sometimes, most of the time, when I extract from the sub tool, I make a mass. I extract. I I tend to see match in a really low uh, uh, polygon count. I think you uh, you have like a better chance to to get it working good. For the ears, I do the same as I did with the block. I totally forgot to put the ears in the block out. But there's no problem because my head is separated at this moment. And for the ears, I just use a polysphere, put in the sides, and, and then I trim it one side and then the other side, and, and that will work fine. Then I start working a little bit more on the features of the face, working uh, to see where the eyebrows are going to go, where the nose is going to go, where the chin, the mouth. But this is just to have kind of like a base I ended up moving it and kind of like chipping it as I work along, trying to match it as much as I can with the design. For the nose, I just create, a, I just use the clay build up and I just build it up more and kind of like put it, uh, uh, put it kind of like the, the, the same shape that is in the design. 
and start detailing a little bit, no much de detailing, but kind of like a, trying to get like the general shapes and details just to give it a little bit more of form. And uh, so I know what everything it belongs to or everything is proportionate to what I'm looking for. So for that reason, I add the eyes. Uh, once I add the eyes, and I think that uh, when I add a good proportion, a good scale of the eyes, what I did here was duplicate it, cut it in half, rotate it, and then duplicate that one and rotate it down so I can do the eyelids for this character. When I do a stylized characters like this, kind of like are very cartoonish, that's the way that I do the, the eyes. I just get the eye, I duplicate the sub tool, I cut it in half, I rotate it, and then and then duplicate that upper eyelid and then rotate it down. I start fitting out a little bit more my the face of my character. And you can see it's still, it's, it's still very rough. It's not gonna look like a, it should be or is supposed to be yet, but that's the, that's, the, that's the thing with me, like someone mentioned in the comments before that I struggle in the beginning the cat with, with the faces I do, but it's, it's part of the process, I think. I, I, I always ended up like a, kind of like nailing it, kind of, the, the, the face, kind of, uh, trying to achieve the likeness if I'm doing like a cartoon characters without references, which is the hardest part or the hardest things to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I know like uh, if I keep working on it and, and keep at it, like I always said in my previous videos, you are always gonna find the results because at the beginning is not gonna look good when you're working on your face. Like but for like you can try as much to get it like right, but it's, 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 gonna, it's, gonna, it's not gonna look good until you keep working, you keep working, you keep adding details, you can add in shapes, you can, and you keep working on your proportions and where where you you know when your go, eyes goes nose mouth make sure that everything is proportioned and everything has a has a really good shapes so as you see like uh, once i added the the mustache now the characters start becoming more together as i said in my previous video once you you add uh, hair to your characters it makes a big difference and have a better sense of uh, how the likeness is working in your characters so everything right there is the same process for example the eyebrows uh, was the same process just masking out and uh, just extract and then see remeasure in a, in a low resolution. So you can get like a nice eyebrows. But you see that everything is coming along, like, like it, it, it takes time and, and you guys shouldn't rush to see good results because it, it takes time, it, part, it's, it is part of the process. I know there's people that you see some um, YouTube videos that they just, I don't know, they just get it at the gecko and say, oh, okay, so I do this part and I have this block out and then my character looks amazing right after and I'm like how how do you do that no idea but if you guys know let me know how they do it but for me it, it takes me time it takes me time to to refine the details to get the likeness likeness and to yeah to make sure that my character is is very appealing is is looking nice but you know, like the, that's the thing. Like sometimes you're in half of it, things are not looking that good, but never give up. Like it, it, it just look at your reference and try to match as much as you can. Try to match as much as you can. And if you can give it your own touch of uh, a style, just give it to it because it, it, it's nice and it's fun to do it. And people start recognizing your art because of those little touches touches of style that, that you give it to, to the characters that you're doing. So yeah, so uh, in this case, I, I kept the forearms separate because they're really close together to the uh, to the biceps. So I kind of like, I want to have that part that really defined. So that's why I take, uh, I left it separate, but I'm gonna work on that at the end of it. Then I work on the, on the gloves, and the same case scenario, I just do a dam standard pinch tool and I just give like a, a, a kind of like a nice old fashioned 
glob. I didn't look at ref uh, references for the, for the boxing glob, but I just I just did like a, what what I thought it would look like. I should have seen references, but that's the thing. Like I do this character. I try to do a character once a week, and I'm super busy with freelance work. I work at, at the studio remotely for a for a company. Uh, the name is IOM Ventures Media, and uh, so I don't have much time to go like uh, really in details. I do this more for practice than something else, and kind of like uh, share with you guys uh, my struggles that I encountered and my process and how I overcome these things that I struggle with. So if you see, like it's all the same technique. So I mask. And then I extract and I extract in a in a low thickness, and then I see remesh. Do it like a, sometimes I put like a point one and I see remesh, and I sometimes use the legacy. It takes uh, it, it it takes probably it's, it is faster to see remesh, but it good it gives good results. So that's what I do there uh, in the part of the hair. Like uh, I said before, you have to block out the hair and think how, how the hair like uh, goes before. I was so bad at doing hair before. I couldn't understand, but I started practicing. I think that I saw some videos from Polygon where he said, like, you know, you have to block out the hair kind of like uh, in the way that it goes or kind of like a... Uh, you know, like blocking out like uh, how it splits in your head and stuff like that. So I kind of like uh, decided to follow that uh, advice and, and I've been having like good results lately with hair and I'm not afraid of uh, doing kind of like a stylized hair with that. And I just do a block of hair and then I add a little st strings or st yeah, st strands of hair, sorry, strands of hair. So yeah, in this case, like I, I went too deep with my thing and I went through the through my nose. But if you encounter that problem, all you need to do is inflate until all those gaps are closing down and then see remesh and make sure when you're carving again, that part, uh, just uh, use back face mask when you have like a really thin surfaces. Then with the with the uh, curve uh, brush curve, I do the strands for this mustache, and also I'm gonna do the strands, uh, two strands that has the the top of the hair that I'm gonna do it right after. If you can see right there, uh, make sure you turn off symmetry, and you do one strand, and then with the uh, with that hair brush I got it. I don't remember where I got it, but I'm gonna find out and I'm gonna tell you in the ne next uh, video series that is gonna be how I prepare my, my character for posing. And it's, it's gonna be a short video. It's not gonna, go, not gonna be that long. And I'm gonna show you how, it's, it's a simple pose that I did. It's nothing the ordinary. And if you see my character is is is, is getting is getting better, and you know it's just part of the process. Uh, the total amount of time was like a, an hour and forty minutes block out detailing and posing, I think, or two hours for doing this character. But you know, I just practice because if it would have been a year ago, that would have taken me like three three hours. So. I've been doing this for a while, so I hope you like you guys like this video that you learn something. Uh, don't forget to check out my other video and see you Monday. Monday I'm gonna release my other video of posing your characters. Okay, so take care, guys, and have an amazing weekend. Bye.